So now, only you know these relationships. Others don't yet. To have to put them in a form of infographic so that it is clearer to those who are reading your proposal or your thesis. Yeah? So that is the conceptual framework. Some people have the theoretical framework as well. It's not wrong. Mm -hmm. um, it's good to have one conceptual framework, one theoretical framework, but it's still up to you, okay, and your supervisor, right? Um, but what is, uh, I would normally advise my students to put the references. I'm not saying that this is a perfect uh, conceptual framework and theoretical framework, uh, but you can improvise. Yeah, whose uh, uh, whose concepts are you applying here? As an examiner, I would want to see that this concept comes from someone. You have taken it from the literature, so put the citation there. Yeah, for example, you put the citation self esteem putih twenty twenty one. Yeah, parenting style. Ali, 2019. Yeah, people need to see that you have done this literature search. It's not from your own. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, RQ, research question, research objective, and method of analysis. There are students I have come across that have one slide with all this information. It's good to have one slide with this information so that the examiners do not need to go back and forth looking at your uh, research objectives and then um, uh, flip through the pages again to, to see your uh, research questions. And uh, in chapter three, they need to see oh, which, um, uh, which analysis refers to which research question. So it's good to put them in a slide as a summary for the research objective the research question and the method of analysis but then again is your own preferences yeah? this uh, i'm using my experience uh, to share with you is good to have yeah right okay this is a slide which highlights on the methodology what is wrong with this slide What is wrong with this slide? If you oh, want to answer, sorry, is it too wordy, doctor. Too wordy. Okay, you can say that um, the first one is too wordy, right? I can take that. Other questions, doctor? I think uh, it's defining the methodology, the word methodology itself, but it doesn't show what kind of methodology is being used in the study. Spot on. The examiners do not want to know what the definition of methodology is because they have read that from your proposal. Yeah? So uh, for this kind of slide, you need to explain how this choice of methodology um, relates to your research question and research objectives. Sometimes you, you, you notice some people are saying, what is your voice? So this is what it means by your voice for the methodology part, yeah? From here, I cannot see your voice because you are just vomiting what you have read from the literature. And you are doing PhD, even when you are doing your master's, examiners are not interested to, to know this. Maybe if you have put that in your proposal, that's fine. But during the oral presentation, remember you only have 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes. So you need to make sure that this methodology answers to your research questions and research objectives. So don't give this kind of slide because it doesn't mean anything. It's only showing off that you have read and just uh, copying and pasting here. Make sure it relates to your uh, um, uh, research question and research objective. Right. 
Another thing is the operational framework. Some people do have this operational framework. Some people don't. Yeah? Um, based on my experience, probably because I am a visual person, I would like to see the operational framework. Okay, take note. Uh, this operational framework usually appears in your chapter three. How you operate, how you collect your data. Yeah, because at the moment, only you know how to collect the data. You need to convey that information to the examiner. Yeah, uh, I'm not saying that this is a good slide. Yeah, yeah, listen carefully. I'm just showing one example here on the operational framework. Some people do it like this. Okay, this is how your data collection will be collected, secondary sources, primary sources, and so on and so forth. Okay, there is another sample here. Yeah. Okay, uh, input, process, output. But the main part for you to highlight in your chapter 3 for the operational framework is how you carry out the survey, the interview, the observation, and the documentation. Yeah. Um, but for me, there is a bit of a problem here. And with the previous slide, what is it? Even though uh, it tells me that uh, this is how the candidate will collect the data, but I need to know which study you use to reflect on this operational framework. If you are using Miriam for your methodology, then you put there adapted from Miriam. If you are using Cresswell, then you need to put there adapted from Cresswell so that it shows to the examiner that this kind of framework has been uh, carried out before. And of course, you are adjusting according to your research yeah okay right uh, this is an interesting um uh, interesting slide yeah uh some people do not like to uh, the word research gap okay uh, i don't like it either <laughs> uh, but uh i think um at some point um you need to know what it means by research gap here. I love this infographic because it tells a lot. Okay, uh, first, um, look at uh, column A and B. Column A, you will do column A when you highlight the local and global scenario through your literature. Yeah, you've done all the literature, put them together. So that's done. Uh, uh, for column A. Column B is when you want to study the current situation. Of course, you want to see what's happening on the ground. Preliminary study. Preliminary study can come in the form of data uh, uh, literature review yeah? uh, to confirm whether your um, problem statement is justified or not. Because remember, PhD is a three-year program. So you need to confirm that your research problem is worth to be studied in the next three years. Yeah? So preliminary study uh, is like confirming that, okay, there is an issue there. So some people carry out small research during the preliminary study. Some people find that is being done. But what I'm saying is that in order for you to get to the gap, you need to identify the current situation first. And the current situation comes from the local and global scenario, from the literature review, from your own experience, from uh, documentation. Yeah? Right. And once you have identified that, what you will come up with the problem statement. The problem statement is 
the gap that your work will address. And your problem statement and your conceptual framework should be able to reflect this shortcoming or this gap. Yeah. The problem with some students is that they have the current situation, a very good one. They have already identified the literature from the documentation, everything. And their contribution of research is clear. Significance of research is also clear. That's the ideal situation that they want to get to. But the gap is not clear. Yeah? Sometimes the gap is not clear because it's not properly stated. So I hope by, 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 by putting this in this format, you can, uh, it can assist you a bit. Yeah? That is what it means by defining the gap through your problem statement and through your conceptual framework. Yeah, but of course it's easier said than done. But at least if you know that, oh, okay, my this is the, the the local and global scenario. This is the significance of research. Then you can put things into perspective. Right. Okay. I am already towards the end of my uh, my my slides. So. Those are the slides that I feel should be in your oral presentation during the proposal defense. Yeah. Uh, right. Some final points based on my experience. Yeah. So you need to realize that you know more about the literature than the examiners. Okay, so this will reduce your fear a bit. Yeah. Oh, right. Your role is more of an explanatory role or a teacher. So if you were to imagine that you are explaining, explaining to the listeners, then it will be, you won't be too panicky. Because if not, if you feel that you will be in the firing line, then you will be anxious uh, throughout the, the presentation. So if it's just more to explain, then I think you'll be good. Remember, the examiners have read your proposal, but probably in certain parts of the proposal, they don't quite understand because it's not clear through your write-up. It's the role of the presentation or a presentation to, uh, to highlight to them more. Yeah. So if you get crushed during your dissertation proposal defense, take note, there are certain times that you feel, oh my God, this, this uh, examiner is very harsh on me. You need to get back up and keep going. It's just going to be like one hour, two hours. Right? After that, life will be as normal to you. So you need to get back and going because it does not mean that you are wrong. It just means that you have not explained yourself clearly enough. You have not explained yourself clearly enough. That's why the examiners do not understand your proposal. Use the oral presentation to explain to them clearly. Yeah? Right. Okay. Next. Okay, this is the last point, sir. right? I would suggest that you identify who your audience are. Uh, usually, your supervisor would know in advance who uh, examiners are. And, yeah, you need to identify them and study them. Why? It would be good if you can cite their work in your written proposal. But if you did not do that, maybe you did not realize, then cite them during the oral presentation. We are all human. It's good to see your name on the slide, you know? So um, if you can study uh, the chairman, the, the chairman is not as important as the examiners. Yeah? Uh, if the examiners have written 
some work related to yours, then try as much as possible to quote once or twice yeah? uh, in your proposal, uh, your oral presentation. Another thing is put page number on your slides. Sometimes we get carried away with the content. We forgot this small input. Yeah? This will help the chairman and examiners to gauge the time for your presentation. Uh, because they need to, 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 to comment. Remember, their comments are more important than your presentation. Yeah, let's say that your presentation has ended twenty minutes. Probably some some uh chairman will just stop your presentation then. But don't worry, the examiners have read your proposal. So, uh, um, putting page number will help them gauge your presentation time but do not go beyond 30 minutes of your presentation so that's why you need to practice practice uh, some supervisors even have mock presentation uh, with the students if you can't get your supervisor's time probably you do your mock presentation with your other fellow uh, phd um, candidates friends so today i help you uh, tomorrow they'll uh, 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 we help each other yeah right and uh, another thing i would like to to highlight is that please do not cram your slides with text yeah uh, this is an oral presentation it's not a reading presentation there is a big difference between oral presentation and reading presentation i don't want to listen to you read the slides if you cram your slides with the text, there is a high tendency that you will read uh, the lines. Yeah? If you think that you still need that information just in case that you go blank, try to put hyperlinks if possible. Yeah? Uh, that might help as well. Put hyperlinks. If you don't know how to do hyperlinks, uh, you, you can learn that. That won't take much time to, to, to study. Yeah, right. Uh, finally, now we are doing a lot of online uh, proposal defense. Yeah, you record your presentation, or if it's not possible to record your presentation, you request the record recording from the faculty. This will definitely help you when you prepare the corrections later. Yeah, if you have any, right. So uh, I think I am done with my presentation. I wish all the best to uh, those of you who are preparing uh, for your proposal presentation and also for those of you who are preparing for your Viva. This, uh, um, the information I shared earlier can also be used for the Viva session.